What's up everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex and in this video I want to talk about the review scores for God of War Ragnarok. Now I'm going to keep this as spoiler free as humanly possible and also the reviews tried to keep it as spoiler free as possible. Now one thing I noticed and one thing I want to talk about here as well if you're watching this video some of the reviews you know obviously the YouTube ones but also even the ones from like IGN etc that have video you know elements they show stuff so this is not and that's probably obvious right but just in case you don't know right this is not like the previews the preview event that happened uh what like a week or two ago where they're only allowed to talk about the opening five hours nobody was allowed to show anything so the footage people were showing were just the earlier trailers of the game now you can actually show stuff now many in fact every single one i watched none of them had shown like you know things that are gonna really really spoil the game but there are characters in different places and, and certain things and it's like oh well, these are brand new scenes so i'm trying to go into this game knowing as little as possible of the actual scenes that happen beyond the trailers so i kind of stopped watching and more or less listened i just listened to what playstation access robert s pearson had to say listen to skill up you know things like that that's what i tried to do because at a certain point it's like i don't even want to see these scenes that aren't spoiler i just don't want to see them obviously the reviews are incredible now i stand very strongly behind my motto as a person and on this channel that you should not let review scores decide for you uh review scores can be part of the decision but it should not be the entire decision that's my that's just what i kind of believe you don't have to believe the same thing but i believe that whether the scores are good or bad so just because the game gets a, a 94 right now on metacritic which is absolutely insane it's the same thing as if a game gets a 60 the review should be part of the reason why you get or don't get or they it can be part of the reason why but you should make your own decision all right and that's just something i like to throw out there every single time but the metacritic score is a 94 at the time of recording this based off 63 reviews so will that number go up well the number of reviews will probably go up it'll probably get closer to 100 but the metacritic score we'll see 94 right now puts it in like incredibly elite territory right really once you get a 90 let's say on metacritic or even the high 80s is really impressive considering it's an average and it's an average that's not like rotten tomatoes right rotten tomatoes average i think is really stupid metacritics at least at least metacritic actually averages the scores now they don't take into account again like playstation access or or skill up or acg doesn't take those into account but uh, you still get, I think, a better a better indicator of what the reviews kind of line up. So once you get into the high 80s, you're looking fantastic. Once you get into, at this point, you would call it the mid-90s, that is outrageously good, right? I mean, there's no taking that away from it, whether the game is great or, you know, you agree with it or not, that's fine. But the game, you know, has a very high score. Now, a lot of the stuff I've seen, let's focus on some of the positives and negatives that seem to be what everybody's saying. And again, I'm not talking about spoilers, and, and they really didn't talk about spoilers either the story seems universally well liked now I've seen a lot of things regarding the ending without saying even what the ending is there's decisions made throughout the game things happen that's pretty much like the gist of what you get from these reviews and most that I saw said they kind of agreed with like the decision making of what happened I, I saw multiple people including Rob from PlayStation Access that talked about like tearful that they cried at, at several points during the game I know we had heard that about the opening remember I made a video about that a week ago about that there were some preview people Greg Miller I think was another one that was crying within the first hour and we were like all right well what happens in the first hour that you would cry because of it and I actually saw people say they cried more than once so they cried like in the middle of the game at the end of the game a lot of people actually at the end of the game I saw a lot of like uh quotes that said tear jerking finale stuff like that those kind of those kind of language so that's uh you know that gets me I guess it gets me excited it also gets me very worried because I again like the, there's leaks there's leaks and you can probably find the entire game right now if you wanted to I'm not looking at comments I'm not going on reddit I'm not looking anywhere I don't know does is it tearful because Kratos dies is it tearful because Freya dies or what like I don't know and it does get me worried because of certain things that could happen but also gets me excited because other people you know are, are so excited so I saw a lot of that the story seems good the combat is something that I think 
pretty much everybody I saw said the combat is phenomenal. Whether it's the best combat of God of War or one of the best feeling games ever. I actually saw a couple people that said like this is one of the best, uh, like when you just touch the controller, it just feels the best out of almost any game they've ever played. That's that's good. I mean, I really, I've talked about this before. I have kind of conflicting thoughts. I adore the combat of 2018. I think when you're fighting like the Valkyries and when you're really zeroed in on the game, it feels phenomenal. I will always hold a soft spot though for like God of War 3. I think God of War 3 was the king of, at the time, like the hack and slash. It, it was the undisputed leader. And I still love that combat to death. I really do. So I kind of go back and forth. I'm not like saying God of War 2018 was awful. I kind of go back and forth of which one I prefer because both were so good. So hearing the combat is kind of universally well liked. Again, visuals. I saw a lot of people obviously talk very highly about the visuals. Audio, you know, score and music is very important in games it's something i oftentimes honestly forget to mention when i review games even though it is pretty important like plague tale requiem is my game of the year at least for the next week and we'll see if god of war replaces it and the music is phenomenal in that game and i don't even think i talked about it in the reviews but that's something i saw quite a bit about that they would actually say the composer's name out loud for just how amazing of a score god of war ragnarok has and i assume the score, you know, kind of consistent throughout, but probably is is really powerful during those emotional slash big moments that nobody's talking about. So there's that. One thing I did see is kind of the difference between, you know, sequel and is it just like a two-part thing? I saw, I believe, Skill Up in particular talked about the shimmying, like the kind of zeroing in on something to, uh, for the loading times and all that. That's been a discussion for the last week or two. There were people on Twitter talking about it as well. It does seem to have upset people. I'm not one of the people that is like, you can't be negative about that whatsoever. Like, you just have to allow it. I mean, I get it. Like, here we are. And I, now, yes, this is a PS4 and PS5 game. If it was only on PS5, would the loading mechanics be the same? Would you have to kind of tunnel yourself through this game so many times? And I, and I don't actually know the answer, but I could understand, you know, if you have to constantly shimmy along a wall to get to the next spot so the game can load you know I, I really like the one shot camera of god of war 2018 i like when you're traveling when you're fast traveling in that game when it you know puts you into the the void basically right i i like that i think that's a very smart mechanic it lets you kind of just listen to mimir and you guys kind of tell stories and i really like it and because it enhances the game even while you're waiting but you know smaller things like the shimmying stuff if there's a way around it and if the PS4 is the thing that's holding it back or it's just game design and they need to find a different thing, whatever it may be, you know, it's something worth talking about, I think, at least. And I, and I did see, obviously, I think over the last couple of weeks on Twitter, that became a huge, huge talking point of that tunneling, right, to kind of like lose what you were just at and get to where you're going. Uh, and then I saw it in the reviews as well, that it, it kind of is a, a nuisance. But at the end of the day, it seems like people absolutely love this game. There really doesn't seem to be any doubt. Um, if you look at the Metacritic, there's a couple eights. I think there's like five eight scores, a couple 85s or eight and a halfs. And then the rest are nines, nine and a half, ten. Uh, and that's like that's the bulk of you know all the reviews. Now again, they don't consider some YouTubers that review it and uh, or just even just talk about. It. You don't even necessarily have to do a review. They don't consider that. So is the score higher? Is the score lower? You know, I I, I feel like it's probably going to settle at somewhere in that. Nine. I think it'll drop just a little. So I feel like it'll probably land at like a 92 to 94. Like maybe it holds a 94, but I think it could fall back maybe into the, the low 90s. But still, like I said, once you, I mean, if you can get like an 87 or 88 on Metacritic, again, based off averages, you're doing pretty well. You Sometimes you'll get like a random site that gives you a four and the rest give you like seven, eight, nine plus, And one gives you a four and that kind of drops you. So it's pretty good. So if you can have a 92 to 94, that's pretty, you know, that's pretty solid. It does get me excited. It's more, I'm more excited now than I was a few hours ago. But at the same time, you know, the reviews really don't change my buying decision. I'm, I was going to buy this game. I still am going to buy this game. Uh, nothing really changed there. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure you guys are subscribed. Bell icon turned on. I'm sure I'll do more God of War content over the next couple days. And then it's, then it's showtime and I'll be playing the game. And I'll have loads of videos right after I play the game um, on this channel. So thank you all for watching. And I hope to see you all on the next one.